All right, I got the injuries for practice today. Um, Coleman won't practice, knee sprain. Ford won't practice back. Garoppolo won't practice ankle. Uh, Moster won't practice knee. Um, Kittle's expected to be limited. Um, Greenlaw's expected to be limited. And I think that's all I got. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Go with uh, Jimmy, do you still hold hope that he can practice later this week? And if not, just what have you seen from Nick that, um, and then where do you want to see him build on if he has to play this week? Uh, yeah, I'll be surprised if Jimmy gets back later in the week. I know he's still pulling to do it. Um, but, uh, yeah, Nick's ready to go. And um, if something happens to Nick, CJ will be ready to go. Nick's got a lot of playing time with us um, in 2018. Uh, prepared him for moments like this. He always does a good job in practice. And um, excited to see him get his opportunity. You said uh, Kittle would be limited in today's practice. H have you seen him move around uh, at all uh, the last couple of days? And, and what's his uh, prognosis for, for Sunday? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen him at all. I'll see him today for the first time. So. Looking forward to seeing how he moves out there, an individual. Hi, right, Kyle. On Monday, you mentioned DJ Jones had an ankle injury. Is he good to go now? Uh, yes, he's good to go from what, what I got right now. Kyle, in light of the fact that you lost two players to ACL injuries on this surf that you have to, uh, surface that you have to play on on Sunday, how do you convince your guys uh, to be confident and play at full speed on this MetLife surf? Well, if you're playing, you better be confident in full speed. I mean, people who know what they're talking about, I mean, the NFL and the NFL PA is having people look at it right now. So um, we'll go with that. If they don't find anything, then you go out there and play. Um, other people tore their ACL in this league um, last week, and they weren't all on turf. So uh, you know how we felt about it. So we'll see what the professionals say, and uh, hopefully we'll learn something. Uh, you've been able to see Jared McKinnon now for two games, and, and without Boster or Coleman, he's probably in line to start. Um, how confident are you in, in Jet, and, and what have you seen from him? I'm very confident in Jet. Um, he, he, I mean, he's done a great job in all the reps that he's gotten in these two weeks. Um, every time he's gotten opportunities, he's came through for us. Um, obviously, with those two guys being out, he should get more opportunities this week, and he deserves it. Um, I know he's excited for it, and we're excited to see him. Kyle, what's been the experience so far at the Greenbrier, and like, why the Greenbrier? Why... What, what was the kind of deciding factors that uh, convinced you guys that that was the good place to stay between these games? Uh, just that it works. Um, I mean, you need a place where you have practice fields to start with. Uh, you want a place that's on the East Coast to start with so you don't have to change time. Um, and a place that can accommodate everybody as far as meeting rooms, hotel rooms. And this place is put on training camp for a number of teams, so it's actually built amazingly perfect for this. Um, so it's, I can't think of a better place for it. Kyle, there was a report that D Ford could be out um, for multiple weeks, and it's unclear what his timetable is. Is that true? And and just given um, how back injuries can be, what what's your level of concern, just overall long term with him going forward? I'm really, I mean, I'm concerned because of what you just exactly said. I mean, when you're dealing with a back injury, you really don't know the timetable. I know he's gotten some medicine this week that we're hoping um, helps. Um, but that's a wait and see approach. So each day you're looking into them, see how it goes. Um, I'm sure it's a long shot this week, but there there is no timetable on it because you got to see how the medicine reacts and if it helps them. Kyle, Kyle, obviously you've been doing this for a long time, but being hit the way you've been hit, what what are the experiences that you draw on as a head coach um, to deal with kind of you know a crisis situation where you have so many injuries and things going on at the same time? Um, just I mean you. I mean, you pull from the experience of your whole career a little bit. You know, I mean, I even go to last year. Um, you know, we had um, players, uh, I, I went over them earlier today, but I mean, we had guys miss 147 games total last year. I mean, we had got a lot of guys who missed a lot of time last year. And um, for the most part, even though we'd stepped back in a couple places, other places stepped it up. And I thought we really handled it, um, injuries very well last year. Uh, it was tough when you lose a, a couple of really good players for the year, like Nick and Solly. Um, but all those other guys, you know, you didn't lose them for the year. And we got to see how long you got to weather the storm without them. But um, we're, we, we, we can do that. We got the players to do that. And um, I think we can get better as this year goes. Obviously, when you lose a great one like Nick, it's tough. But uh, we got a lot of good players in here and a lot of guys that can help us win games. And that's what we fully expect to do. You got somebody else? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Kyle, uh, 
can you elaborate a little bit on, on Nick Mullins and maybe how he's developed in this last year and a half when he hasn't played much? And, and a separate question, kind of your reaction to getting fined for, for not wearing a mask today? day? Um, yeah, well, Nick's been great. I mean, when he's got the experience, um, when he got thrown in the fire, he played very well with little experience in practice because he didn't get a ton of reps, not counting training camp. Um, this year was a shorter training camp, and he didn't get to play last year. So um, you go off to the reps he had a ton of last year in the preseason and everything, and uh, I know our players believe in him, and he'll be fine. And what was your second? The mask. He's muted. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Um, your reaction to, to getting fined for not wearing a mask during the game of the day? I'm obviously disappointed. I mean, no one, no one ever wants to have to spend that type of money. Um, but the biggest uh, disappointment was, you know, I just, I, I think our organization has taken this stuff very seriously. Um, I think our organization has been unbelievable with the protocols that we've done and um, the ones that, that have been given to us and what we followed. Um, obviously, I can do a better job during the game of wearing it and I got the message and I will do a better job, but I don't want to take away from the fact of how good our organization has done in this stuff, in the buildings, um, with all the players, how we've traveled, um, the money we've put into it to make it safe. Um, but yeah, I got the message and I will do better. Jennifer? Yeah. Jennifer? Hey, uh, sorry. Kyle, Muhammad Sanu has already been coaching up your guys on the sidelines. You, they showed him during the broadcast talking to Kendrick Bourne. And Randall Ayuk has already talked about him. He's been such a leader for him. Is that something you kind of thought about when you brought him in? Is that kind of what you projected? Uh, yeah, that's what I definitely was hoping for. Um, you know, you know, Emmanuel helped us so much last year in the type of, you know, the talent he was, but also the person he was, just being the veteran he was, how he had approached the game every way. Um, Mo was very similar in his mindset of that. And, um, you know, we've going into this year with our veterans really being KB and um, Debo coming back for a second year and um, having Debo out and stuff like that and having some of the injuries when losing Richie and Ayuk just coming back. thought it was great to get an, another guy in here, but also a guy who's been in the league, been in a lot of situations and um, could help us on the field and also help us out in that room. Back to D Ford. Uh, he's dealt with uh, back issues quite a bit in his career, going back to his days at Auburn. Th those seem to be lower back um, problems. Is the current one related to that, or is it a different uh, different area of the back? I don't know. I don't get into it as detailed as you. I know that it started with the neck, went to the back, and I'm waiting till that back is better. Sorry, man. <laughs> Kyle, with, with uh, Coleman, is that a ligament or is that a, a cartilage issue with the knee? Um, I mean, I know what I got here is knee sprain. I honestly right. wish I know that answer. I would answer it, but it says knee sprain. I'm not. A, I mean, I'm expecting Tevin to be out a little bit. I'm expecting about four weeks, so he could be a possibly IR candidate here to return um, towards the end of the week. You know, he's a, he's worse than Raheem is. On um, the guys who are coming back from injuries after not playing last year, McKinnon and um, and Jordan Reed, how do you balance now trying to make up for some of the injury issues that you do have and keeping them sort of on the schedule that you had planned, ramping them up and, and not giving them too heavy of a workload? Um, I mean, you do both. I mean, you start out easing them in, one, because um, of the depth that we had at those positions. I mean, regardless of the situation, I mean, Kittle's a pretty good tight end, and you know Raheem and Tevin are pretty good running backs, also. So it's kind of worked out that way naturally, um, especially with Jet um, and giving him a role as the third down back and everything. Um, I know Jet is up for the challenge. I know his body is up for the challenge. I mean, if we didn't think their body was, then it, then it would be different. But um, Jet, Jet's good to go um, from what we see, from what the doctors see, and, and from what he tells us. So um, I don't really look at it as those guys have to be on pitch counts. Um, Jordan was just taking time getting into our offense and stuff in the late start. Um, Andy had a couple setbacks in camp too when he started to get going, so he wasn't quite ready to be thrown out there that much, and he wasn't quite needed to um, right away. He was needed to a little bit more last week as he got better, and um, we'll see if Kittle comes back and how much that changes, but um, I know health-wise and mentality-wise, he's he was ready for what he did last week, and he had no setbacks. Kyle, it was announced this morning
morning, the odds of Neil Dion Jordan coming from the practice squad. Can you just give us your over, oversight now that uh, at least for this first wave that, that you've got the outside rushers and you're kind of going to go with this? And I, I don't know much about Dion Jordan other than what I saw a little bit with the Raiders and the Seahawks. Can you just give us your insight on, on Dion specifically too? Um, yeah, I mean, Z Ziggy's had a, a hell of a career. Um, you know, he did a great job in Detroit. Um, had to play against him a number of times. He's a guy I've always hated playing against. Um, had a little bit of a setback the last couple of years with some injuries, and um, we think we're getting him in here, and we know he's hungry. Um, we love the guy. It's great um, that our Chris Eric has worked with him and knows him well, and they got a good relationship. And we've been trying to get him here for a while, and we're glad it finally worked out. And, and Dion, um, everyone knows how he started out his career, all the setbacks he had, but uh, we tried to get him here a few years ago. When we ended up losing him, Seattle got him. Um, when he played for them, he was a tough guy to go against and had a very good year there. And then when he came and helped out Oakland, too, we thought he did a good job. So we were pumped to get him in camp this year. He battled through camp. It was his first camp since 2013. He was able to grind through it, stay healthy, and uh, he just kept working, and he stayed with us on the practice squad. And we knew it was a matter of time when he was going to get an opportunity. I didn't know it would come this fast, but um, we ex we've been expecting him to come up and help us out this year. And uh, now it's week three, and it's his time. Last one, folks. Hey, Coach, uh, a West Virginia-specific question. Hey, uh, the city or the town of White Sulphur Springs, a couple of year, hundred years ago, built an entire industry on tourists believing in the healing powers of the waters there in that area. So I just wondered if you could tell us uh, what you guys are doing specifically, uh, maybe different while you're at the Greenbrier this week. Um, well, I did not know that about the the healing powers of the water. So I'll stop with the bottled water and get right to that um, for our players. We could use it right now. Um, but I mean, me personally, I, I've been kind of stuck in my room the last two days. I know the players got the day off, so um, they've been running around. There's all these things to do around the resort. I know a couple guys did the golf course. Um, I think there's some shooting places. Um, I know there's a bowling alley. Um, so there's a ton of things here. I mean, I brought my family here um, when I lived in Washington about five years ago. I know how much they loved it when I came. So it's a great place. Um, I'm not really seeing it all and enjoying it all. Maybe I'll get to a little bit Friday afternoon. Um, but it's, I know, I know our players are loving it and they got their two days and now we're in a normal work week. So, uh, they'll be tied down here probably till about Friday afternoon.